Good morning, it's race day, baby. Today I'm getting ready to race a 12 hour, as many laps as possible, basically run as many miles as you can in 12 hours type race. I've never done anything like this before and I'm actually super excited because I've always wanted to do one of these races. Although I do think the mental side of doing the same laps over and over will get old by the end of the day. But I'm essentially using this as my final tune up race and or run to figure out all the last little logistic things for my 100 miler. So food, pacing, nutrition, hydration, gear, all of the things kind of seeing how it goes. I'm trialing some new shoes. So a lot of like figuring out the last little bits before we head into the final push from 100 miler. I'm excited to just go out there today and have a day. So let's go. All right, we are here at the start slash finish line, parking the car. I will crew myself out of my car today. Hopefully, I don't want to stop my car too many times. Um, so I'm gonna try to logistically try to plan that out. But there's a phenomenal aid station, looks like they're preparing right there at the start's finish as well. I got my shirt, one of the nicer gray shirts I've ever had. 380 today, so. Let's get some. All right, go ahead, everyone line up. Good morning, sun's up, guns out. Sun's out, guns out, that's what you just say in college. Rolling around here, we are an hour and 13 minutes in, six and a half miles. So far feeling good. Drink pretty good bot of my scratch super mix, which is like, I think like 90 carbs in a bottle. A couple crackers. Um, Hungry actually, which is, I think is good. This is pretty runnable for the most part so far. I'm doing the 11 mile long version of the loop to start and bank some miles in the morning. So let's keep going. All right, we are two hours, 20 minutes in. Um, my watch is 11.9. I think it sounds over. I got a pickle, I got a cookie. I lapped myself five minutes at the A station and we are back out and on to the next 11 mile loop. Let's bang some miles before it gets hot. All right, so nutrition wise, and these updates will probably deteriorate as the days goes along. We have 90 bottle, 90 gram bottle scratch, um, a third of a sleeve of crackers, um, two chips Ahoy, some potato chips, a cup of ginger ale, that pickle, and then I just got a pocket full of candy at that A station and an element. Probably put in a little more carbs those first two hours, but I need, felt like I need salt more and getting my element down kind of didn't feel so good in my stomach, so I just let that pass and I'm ready to hopefully get some more carbs on me in this third hour here on this loop. So let's go. Quick reset at the car. I got, I drink, dude, like three gels during that last loop. Um, my watch is at like 24 on the dot. Um, ran out of water, so I stopped eating because I didn't have enough water to get it down. So I need to kind of catch up on that. Here, I'm gonna get this Gatorade out. Um, definitely need to refill my bottle more now on that stop. I hate, it's not, it's like the sugar water mix that they have here, it tastes disgusting. So haven't been drinking that. I'm gonna refill with some Gatorade here. I had two pickles. I got pierogies, donut holes, um, a, a, a cup of Coke, and it's starting to get hot, so. I gotta watch my salt and my water, but I don't know why. I mean, miles are moving fast, feeling good. Gonna turn and burn and get right back out there. All right, let's hit it. All right, back out here. We are just under five hours. That was about a nine minute A station stop. Took a little bit more time. It's nice to use an actual bathroom. Got some pickles water, eating my food, walking a little bit while eating. Reset up my car a little bit and headed back on. I think I'm gonna try to do another 11 lap, but learn my lesson. And I'm going to refill water when I see it. Um, and I have a nice water bottle filled with Gatorade and Element to kind of catch back up on and getting some carbs in. Um, as we roll into this next lap, it's starting to get hot. I should probably got ice back there, rinsed off my face, but it's all right, let's keep going. All right, we just passed the marathon mark, just almost at 27. A little bit of road break here. I did drink that whole Gatorade and Element bottle in that first like two and a half-ish, going on three miles. Coming out at eight, probably much needed. Had those two pierogies. Uh, so I feel like I'm pretty good bringing it back on food. Refilled my bottle. So I have this bottle and a second one, which is good. So hopefully this lap, um, the last lap didn't go bad. I just definitely needed water. And it was definitely a little disoriented. Probably in those other clips at my car, the aid station, because I was just like so focused on getting water and rehydrating and getting what I needed. Um, Cause I started to get a little hot, sweating a lot more. So just gotta try to keep up with that. But otherwise, you know, a lot better. My stomach just feels a little squishy, making me want to slow down a little bit, but we're on good pace for the day and we got a lot of daylight left to run, so no rush.
back at the Hikey Hill, uh, PR'd my 50K again, which is nice doing it at a 12 hour effort. I uh, hit in like six, 14 something, maybe 15. Obviously a more runnable course, not as much vert on today, but it's really fun to see my, me hit PRs this year during training, not tapered, sore legs and lifting, training through stuff, and makes me really excited for the fitness I've built underneath all that. No matter what happens in my 100 miler, just really proud of the training um, and the fitness that I've clawed back through last year, year and a half. Um, something that I really, really, really am proud of. So it's exciting. We'll see if I can wrangle in a 50 miler PR today. But now that I hit 30, I know I have like five and a half hours to hit 20 more miles. So I can not like kill myself, but also don't want to take the gas, foot off the gas entirely. Um, quite yet. So gotta keep going. Okay, back at the car for another reset. I totally forgot to put on this last time I needed this. Um, so I've done three 11 something mile loops. My watch actually says they're 12, but the race says it's 11.1. Um, and I was gonna do an 11 and a six and then try to squeeze in the 3.5 that you get to do in your last loop. But I saw Regis, um, cause he's behind me. And then the other guy that I was running with earlier and they both said that the six mile loops are actually easier. So I don't know if I have time to get in three. Hey, speak of the devil of those, but I think I can get in two and a three. And my watch is at 36 miles for the day. I'm taking a longer reset right now. I actually feel pretty good, but I know I'm gonna hit 50 miles. So I just don't feel the need. Um, once I PR to my 50K, um, I don't feel the need to blow up. As long as, I, I mean, if I get 50 miles or more in under 12, 11, like 57, I PR that too. But I'd rather just get 50 miles in on the day or as close to that. But I know that at this point, I'm gonna get at least 45. And I mean, we're at seven and a half hours and I have till 12. So, I don't need to die and I do feel, or I'm starting to feel, um, the shoe change here to my new balances that I've been running in um, all year. I do start to feel a little bit like I ran 35 miles, 26 miles, um, but actually not too bad. I feel like every time I do this this year, I'm feeling stronger and stronger, which is a really good sign. And my food's kind of been on and off, but I don't feel bad. Um, I think I'm catching up when I do drop back down. I have a spread here of pierogies, donuts, and pickles. Uh, super appetizing. Stack another you can. These you can gels have actually been really great this year. They gifted me a box and then I just kept buying them on my own. I do actually have a bottle of super scratch. You know what? I'm gonna not do Gatorade. I'm gonna drink this. This looks like this is probably good to drink. Cause if I'm only doing these six mile loops now, I don't need as much stuff. And I'll fill this bottle for that last lap. The aid station workers asked me if I was gonna save any food for anyone else. And I was like, I'm a hungry girl. I'm actually pretty proud of myself for eating this much. I don't normally do that well. I don't actually even feel like I'm eating that much, but I am eating like kind of whole foods, at least in an ultra, which is new, new for me. Um, I am going to put an element in this. There's already electrolytes and carbs in this, but not too much. So I actually like my liquid IVs, love them, use them all the time. But I've been racing with elements. Um, I think I covered this in a few videos because I've been just like pixie sticking them. I mean, I've also been needing closer to a thousand milligrams, 800 to a thousand per hour. Um, and sometimes it's just easier to, there's less powder, but more salt. I'm resetting and change my shoes. Caffeine powder in there, you want it? I have one, I think I'm gonna put one in this bottle. This is my longest stop, that's for sure. But I kind of needed to reset a little bit. All right, let's get back out there. All right, I just completed my six and a half mile loop. I did throw up. <laughs> I learned a lesson today though. It's definitely caffeine. I got to figure it out for my 100. The plan is to not drink caffeine for like a week or so before the race and then not eat, use it till night. But it is really upset. Like that definitely just like made my stomach revolt. So I feel fine, but learning lesson there. And then, um, Six and a half loop, way, yeah, way easier than the 11, 12 mile one I've been doing all day before that. But I think it's like nine, 10, nine hours and 10 minutes in. Um, that took me about an hour and a half-ish with the aid station. So I think that I have time for one more, six and a half, and then the three and a half final loop of the day. And then we should be done. Let's send it, unless I start to really hurt, really slow down 
um, peeing or in my 50 miler is also likely. So what a lovely little training day. Let's go. Our, our 50 miler, 10.30. Some seconds, I can't don't even know. I'm not even sad or emotional about this day. Doing three and a half more than I'd be done. I'm just so proud of myself. This has been, no matter what happens in my 100 next month, this has been the best year of ultra running that I've ever had. I have been so consistent. I have worked so hard to come back from that injury and lost fitness from finishing my PhD and all that burnout. I have been so consistent. I'm just so proud of that consistency and showing up and putting my ego aside and running slow and just trusting the process and doing the work, showing up. God, I'm not even proud of the PRs or the day, but the process that I've committed to, God, that just, it feels good. It really does. All right, let's finish this up and be done. Let's freaking finish this thing. Let's finish this thing. It's been ultra. If I didn't cry at the very end, I put my comeback. <laughs> I'm such an emotional person. Oh my God, ultras are crazy. Um, I haven't been emotional all day. I put on my comeback kit album I made last year when I was coming back. I started to cry because I just thought about how I still have a few weeks of training left, but this is like the last big dance. And like, I don't know, I still have those weeks of training, but this is it. Like I'm actually doing this thing and I've been so worried all year about, you know, what if I DNF? Oh my God, such a fraud. All of that stuff, like, so what if I fall? It's better to try than do nothing at all. I just, coming off of this year of training, this really feels like the pinnacle of everything up until that big dance. And I'm just, I don't know, I don't wanna to celebrate too soon. There's still, you know, miles in the tank to be done. But I'm just really, really, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna, I, I mean, I, I don't know if I'll DNF, I don't know how the day will go, but I'm gonna show up to that starting line with the absolute best, best version of myself that I could have possibly brought to it. And I'm really, really so proud of that. Okay. We've got this final freaking climb of the day right before the aid station every time. It sucks every single time. I think this is the worst part of the whole day. Every time I had to climb this hill. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm done. So, there's that. You wanna come do my review? Good girl. All right, my friends, I'm gonna do a quick recap of this weekend's 12 hour race. I am now three days past the race. I haven't exercised at all since. I really am not feeling too bad. Um, I'm gonna see how my ankles feel when I do a run um, this week. But other than that, my muscles and body feel fine. This is actually the best I felt after a race this year, which is pretty exciting and pretty promising, um, considering that that was probably one of the better efforts of a race that I've had in years. And it makes me feel really, really good about um, next month, I think, all things considered. It's really becoming real that I'm trying to run 100 miles here soon, and I think I recognize and really felt after this weekend's race that even if I DNF, do not finish, it's very likely 100 milers, no matter how prepared you are, I feel really, really proud of this year of running and training, and I'm really glad, hello, that I was able to make that race happen. That was not a plan. I signed up for that race on Wednesday um, and ran it on Saturday. We came home from California early. Um, I lifted and ran as normal that week. I did pull back miles a little bit with the hopes of having a bigger mileage day there during the race that weekend. And then I did even lift on Sunday afterwards, finishing up my upper body lift. So I treated it like a true week of training like I have every other race I ran this year. Um, and it's the best that I felt both out there um, to in a 50 mile distance run. Granted, there's a lot less vert than some of the other 50 mile distance efforts I've done in the past, but that's the strongest I've felt running for that long, um, probably in years of bull running. And it felt like a very good pinnacle of just all the fitness of what I've been training and trying to do this year. So I just feel really good about that. So no matter what happens next month, I feel really proud about everything I've done this year and the efforts I've put in to get there. And that would be the fifth time I've ran an ultra distance this year. I've done four 30 plus mile days and that was my first 50 mile day of the year. And it feels good knowing that I did um, a 50 mile run, even though it was unplanned. <laughs> what this mean? Um, before my 100 mile attempt and just can feel really good about that. So I ran for 11 hours and 14 minutes and 24 seconds of the race. I didn't do the full 12 hours. I probably could have squeezed in um, my final lap being the six mile and six and a half mile lap 
instead of the three and a half mile one that you were allowed to do on your final lap. But I wanted 50 miles for the day and I was pretty happy with it. So I did three 11, they said it was 11.1 miles. It was definitely longer and the RD definitely said that afterwards it was closer to 12 miles. So three 12 mile laps um, to get into that like 50K distance. I did PR my 50K in the middle of those first three 11 mile, 12 mile laps and I feel really good about that. And then I did two medium, so two six and a half mile laps. That seemed a little bit more true to distance there. And then one shorter three and a half mile lap to finish the day at 53.37 um, miles. I actually got into the aid station um, before going out for the final lap at 49 point like seven miles and me being as honest as I am I went back out for that final lap and rounded it out to get a true 50 mile distance on feet that day um me being me that sounds about right and I did PR my 50 miler as well during that race in 10 hours in 30 minutes that's a huge PR for me again this was a much runnable race it probably was around 80 to 140 feet of gain per mile um depending on the mile on average across the race a little bit more runnable but for me that actually feels really good because of all things that i struggle with when it comes to ultra running i struggle with the running part of it the most yes kona can you sit so i feel really good about that because it's the running part of ultra running that i've been worried about and i've been more worried this year not about my ability to hike or walk i'm historically a very strong hiker and a good walker um, but my ability to run and run enough in my 100 miler that i can actually keep up the pace to make you know my running part faster because you do lose time at aid stations so i feel really good about that because my 100 miler is about 140 feet of gain and loss per mile on average but it does look like the course is pretty runnable mixed with some like bigger climbs so if i can run those runnable parts i think that will allow me to make up a lot of time and or feel good during that race in between the aid stations especially you know earlier on in the day without it being very stressful and fatiguing on my body so my efforts and pace out there felt pretty good it you know it wasn't 100 percent of an effort um i also was not 100 percent prepared tapered or ready and that makes me feel good about that then going into next month and hopefully it feels the same and so it was only about 5,100 feet of elevation gain and i averaged a 12 38 pace that's also with aid stations i felt really good about my aid station turnarounds that's something i was practicing as well i think I think I had two five minute stops, give or take. Um, maybe I think one was closer to eight. So maybe like a six and an eight um, minute stop. What is this dog doing? She has a rubber spine. And then one I did stop for about 14, 15 minutes. That one was a little bit longer. I needed to change my shoes and regroup. And then the final one, I just turned, told them that I hit my lap and went right back out. So I probably spent about, let's say 25 to 30 minutes in aid stations during the day. So I think I did a pretty good job with that. I do think I had some pretty quick turnarounds. Um, I probably could have dilly dally a little bit less uh, here and there, but I felt pretty good about that all things considered. Um, the longer regroup was probably necessary. I also didn't have crew. I was crewing myself out of my car. And so that also added to it because I had to go open my car, get the things I needed. So I do think it will help to have crew and have people have things ready for me during my 100 milers. So I don't feel bad about that. I actually feel pretty good about that. Um, and so overall, I'm just, I'm pretty stoked. I definitely had some pretty consistent pacing across the day. I did slow down a little bit, but overall, when I look at my mile splits, um, I held pretty steady and pretty consistent across the day. I basically held steady, pushed to kind of get to that 50K PR I knew I could get, but I knew that I was gonna kind of get it anyway. So I didn't want to overly extend and exert myself. Felt really happy about that. Hit that in about 6.15. Huge PR for me. I really do think I have a sub six hour 50K under my belt. I actually try to be fast on trail, peaked, tapered, all of those things. I feel pretty good about that, knowing there's more fitness in the tank than even what I'm giving in these races this year. My 50Ks have gotten better um, all year across the year, which is pretty exciting. And then my 50 mile PR obviously was huge, but again, a little bit more runnable, of course, but I knew I was gonna kind of PR that no matter what. I did push a little bit the last few miles just to get it done, because I knew once I hit 50, I was gonna kind of let myself just like, just finished the rest of the day. I wasn't gonna full send it, but I did make myself run through the finish through the end because I wanted to finish proud, but I felt proud about it no matter what. And I feel like I held my paces and efforts pretty consistently across the day there and felt really good about it. So a huge effort day for me, a huge mental win, um, a huge physical win, two PRs, a last minute race, probably the best ultra I've ran this year, mixed with being now six weeks out from my first 100K attempt. 
um, I feel really, really good about this. And I feel like mentally it was good. It makes me feel really good and complete about this year of training. It's not the end. I still have a few more hard weeks of training after this kind of recovery week, but it, it makes me feel really good and really proud of myself for the effort I put in that no matter what happened next happens next month, I know I gave it my all in this training cycle in this year. And I'm really proud about how much fitness I've gained. And also knowing that I'm doing these performances and improving across the year, not recovered, not tapered, fatigued, not intentionally even trying to train for these distances and I am getting fitter and seeing that show up which is also really exciting as well and so the biggest thing for me I think mentally was I did get a little emotional there at the end because I just was so proud of myself and made me realize what I'm actually attempting and trying to do but other than that I really went into the day I, I didn't have the pre-race nerves that I normally have the upset stomach the nausea the the anticipation I went into it just I got a good night's sleep I ate the night before I ate the morning of not a ton but I did eat um, and then I also went into the day and said like, this is what I want to do today. This is what I'm going to do today. And I went out there with the intention of doing that. I'm getting a lot better at racing races and ultras and learning where and when to push and how to push in these races and not just hold back out of fear that later on I won't be able to push the gas. I'm getting better at trusting myself and my racing and my pacing. Obviously I have no idea how to apply that to a hundred miler and that seems scary to me, but in the 30 to 50 mile distance, I'm starting to feel a lot more confident and I can go out there and execute on the day and just focus on accomplishing the task at hand and pushing for kind of hours at a time. Again, I'm not pushing at hundred percent in these races. I do think that I had more in the tank, but I didn't want to totally blow up. And I feel that, you know, now Tuesday after I feel really good recovery wise, but other than that, I, I felt really good for the first time in a race where it didn't feel like it was as hard of a thing it was supposed to do that actually felt easier than last year's 50, which I think is a testament um, to just greater fitness. And I do remember even being in my 50 miler last year and the running parts of the course, the course, the parts that were runnable, the roads, the flatter sections of trail, like I feel like I had a hard time pushing the pace or running faster consistently or it just felt harder. My legs felt heavier. And I do feel like that is improved tremendously from that from you know almost exactly a year ago and i feel like that is a really good testament to just how many miles i'm putting in this year and how hard i'm training so i'm really just really proud of this effort um i know i'm kind of rambling here and self-reflecting in a way that isn't so specific to you guys benefiting from my race and my strategy and i know sometimes people are looking for that but i do want to really reflect on that and show you one what it looks like to see someone who's just really proud of themselves and their effort to what happens when you do consistently show up i have been so consistent in my training this year you saw me rant about that towards the end of my race. I have skipped maybe one lift that like I just couldn't get in and I've gotten in almost every single run this year. There's a few here there were traveling where I didn't get in quite the mileage I wanted, but I have been so dedicated to this process both this year. We're training for my 100 miler and then last year in my whole return to ultra series, which you can go back and watch going back to that 50 miler after my injury. The last two years since coming back from injury from a run walk to PRing like multiple times this year has been huge and that's just a testament to me showing up doing the work and sticking to the process so if you gain anything from watching my return to ultra series last year and then my training for this 100 mile series this year i hope is that you see what it looks like to one be proud of yourself vocally proud of yourself and two what it looks like when you are consistent and deliberate and you show up and you do the work even if it's not always perfect and sexy even if you run slow as hell all summer long because the heat and humidity are wrecking you you're still gaining fitness and if you just show up for those things magic does truly happen i don't think even at this point in time me if i finish that 100 miler is the most impressive thing i've done this year i think this training and the process of getting to that is one of the things that i am most proud of that i've ever done in my entire life no matter what happens next month and so i really really want to like hone that in for you guys watching here because i know so many people they want to rush to the start line or the finish line or they want to rush the process or they want the fitness but they don't want to put in the volume or time or hours necessary to get there but really committing to that has made landslide progress for me and i'm so proud of everything that i've done this year so we are again six weeks out um, doing a little bit of a deload recovery week this week, just coming off of that effort. I feel pretty good. It's Tuesday. I'll probably run tomorrow on Wednesday and just kind of run by feel the rest of the week, not stressed about mileage. And then I have two really big, two to three big weeks of training left under my belt. I haven't decided if I'm doing a two or three week taper yet. I think I'm just going to see how the next two weeks of training goes. Since one of those weekends I will be in Colorado, I have that next weekend as like a squeeze if I need to kind of make that up. Um, but hitting a 70 mile week last week, I've hit, 
a few upper 50s to mid 60 mile weeks or in seven day spans. Um, I feel really good about the volume and base I'm doing. I'd love to get a few 60-ish plus mile weeks in under my belt before fully tapering for this thing. Lots of time on feet, so much trail experience this year. I just feel really good about what I'm bringing to that start line. Again, I have no idea what's gonna happen once I'm out there. It's so unknown to me. People fitter than me, smarter than me, more talented than me, DNF from 100 milers and people less fit than me. Random Joes, people who sign up for these things with less training, finish them, and it's all kind of a gamble out there on the day that you're gonna get and how things are gonna go. But I feel good about what I'm bringing to that start and I have a few more weeks to finish smart. So thank you guys all for being here. Thank you for tuning in and following this journey. We have a few weeks left, so if you want to let me know what you want to see out of the final countdown of this process. I'm going to be documenting a lot leading up to this a little bit more than I have been. I have a full week of training planned here soon and I am just so stoked um, to bring you guys along for the ride no matter what that ride may be on the day of. So thank you so much for being here and we'll catch you on the next one.